What are you doing? Other than being very backlit. Turbo has a new favorite toy. Wow, the sun. Very intense today. He's playing with that jolly ball. He was too small for that last year. He'd play with it, but he'd kind of stumble around with it. And he's having the time of his life. Not really doing the retrieving thing, but I'm okay with that. This is an exception. Normally I want him to bring the toys back. That one, it's really big, wet, and kind of slimy. You keep that. Keep that mess to yourself. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Is it talking too fast? I feel like I may have been. Yule palms are outside. I <laughs> mentioned in the last vlog that I wasn't sure when I was going to bring them out, but I had been waiting because the forecast was just really iffy. They can take a lot of cold, but they had been in the garage in that grow space where it's really toasty. And uh, I just, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to bring them out. Just didn't feel right leaving them inside when the windmill palms and everything else were out here. And the lowest temperature I'm seeing is like 34. I'm sure that will change. There'll probably be some more snow and some ice, but I'm not too concerned about that. They need to get out into the fresh air. Also very badly need to be repotted. I know things are messy. I'm gonna start working on that this week. I have like three things I wanna get done in this week's vlog throughout the week. One is, I don't want to do it, but I need to get this fountain cleaned out. It's disgusting. Isn't that nasty? It's low on water, so it's a good time to go ahead and get it cleaned up. So I need to get this whole area cleaned up, get that fountain dumped and washed out and do a lot of sweeping with the pine needles and some TLC for the Akuba back there. And then I have these two planters that normally go <laughs> closer to the steps or pulled out because the cover was in the way. I didn't see much reason to pull them back in towards those steps when I need to come in here, clean them up. It's probably going to make a bit of a mess. But I would like to get these cleaned out and maybe pot by a nursery and grab just some really cheap cool season annuals to toss into them since they're already full of soil. So I may as well throw something in there so it's something nicer to look at. Having the plan of planting something in there that's pretty makes it a lot easier to motivate myself to clean these out. It's really not going to be that hard to clean them out. You just go with the clippers and get all that done. So I'd like to do that. But the first thing I'd like to do is plant up this great big giant vase here with a bunch of grass. Yes, grass. That's what I said. I have just had this obsession lately. There's going to be a couple videos that come out after this one of me just planting grass and things. Wheat grass. It's spring. There's that lushness. Why don't I have the grass around? I know the table's all messy. You know, I don't really pick up that much for the vlogs. The videos during the week, different story, but for the vlogs, just hanging out and chatting for the most part anyway. So I did stuff this up with a bunch of different materials that I may or may not use. I don't know for sure about that with the embellishments. Aren't these eggs pretty? Look at those, they're so shiny. Love a shiny egg or a shiny anything. I've been waiting for him to simmer down so I can get the camera up onto a tripod. I've been out here for like 45 minutes. He's not calming down. He's still going strong. I would like to get this vase done first so we can get it planted up and won't be much to look at because it's going to be mostly seeds going in here. But then by the end of the vlog, it'll be the end of the weekend. There should be some action going on in there. Those wheatgrass seeds only take a couple days to sprout. And so once he simmers down for his afternoon nap and I know it'll be safe to put the tripod up, I'm going to get started on this little fun grassy thing over here. It's been like 20 minutes. He's not simmering down anytime soon. So I'm just going to start up on this and be very careful with the tripod and hope he doesn't knock it over. First things first, going to dump some charcoal here in the bottom. That's going to provide an area for the water to drain turbo and hope we stay clean. I'm not putting much in there though, just a little bit. Actually, I think that's a good amount. The bottom of this container has a slight reservoir in it. That's perfect to hold that act. Did I call it carbon? Charcoal carbon gonna help keep the water clean that drains down in there. Now, pre-moistened potting mix. The pre-moistened part, very important because you saw that. He was being so calm this morning. <laughs> he said plenty of activity and exercise. Anyways, the pre-moistened part, that's important because you see how shallow that drainage area is for everything when that wheatgrass gets in here, I'm not really going to be able to drench it to get it moistened. I'm gonna take that seashell away from him. And I should probably point out, this is more than just like pre-moistened. There's a lot of moisture in there. You see it dripping out? So I had planned on using these Easter eggs to do this layer in between the charcoal and the soil, but I put a few in there and you really can't even see them. So that's just, seems like a pointless thing to do. I'm going to skip that step. Since this is wheatgrass, I don't necessarily think that having that drainage layer in between the soil and the charcoal at the very bottom is 
all that necessary. If you've ever grown wheatgrass before, you know that it pulls up water like constantly. It's a very thirsty thing to grow. So there shouldn't be much moisture that needs to drain down there. I feel like the grass is going to use up most of it. That and this whole thing is very temporary. This is just, you know, for several weeks. Just have something pretty in the house for spring. That's it. Oh, wow, that's a lot of reflection. Did you see anything I was talking about? Probably not, I'm sorry. Over here, I have a cup full of wheatgrass seeds that have been soaking in water. It's not typically necessary because they sprout as long as there's like pretty much any moisture around them normally. But since, like I mentioned, I didn't want a very heavy layer of soil inside of this container here, because I don't want the soil level to be all the way up here. I want it down low. I wanted to make sure that these were moistened since I'm not really going to be watering them in. So that's, that's why I soaked them. It's only been like 30 minutes. So it's not even a very long soak. That should be ample. We'll go from the top down here. That'll make it easier to see. What I want to do here is create uh, maybe a horseshoe shape or a U shape, an arch in here where I can put some gravel to set something on, then have the wheat grass growing all the way around it, which is another reason that I made sure to pre-moisten the wheat grass that makes it stickier, easier to work with. I think that's going to help lay it out in a more uniform pattern in here. And you know, just to be safe, I have this little weatherproof notebook sitting right next to me. I'm gonna set that in the area where I don't want the seed and I can fine tune it once it's all laid down. I think that that would make it easier to lay it out right. Okay, that's a bit much. That'll do. Spread that out into a more even layer so that the seeds aren't all piled on top of each other. I did go really thick with it. But that was just because I want to make sure that I have some left to work with to make a shape here when I lift the notebook up. Put a very light layer of soil on top of that, almost a gravel. Just a little bit, not very much. Be able to see some of the seeds coming through, that's okay. They don't need darkness to get sprouted. Now, some vase filler. Going to use this gravel to make like a little patio area. I don't know if patio area is exactly the right way to describe it, but you'll see, it'll make sense. There. So that's, it's like there's a little pathway leading up to, I called it a patio. Just a little, what I'm hoping will look sort of like a hidden garden area in there. It's gonna be the perfect spot to set a fun little spring bunny rabbit this way so we can see that bow tie around its neck better huh you get it now i know the reflection is really bad so at the end of the video i'll make sure to come back and update with how this is looking that wheat grass should start going probably won't be very tall by the end of the video have until friday so saturday to friday today's saturday so we'll see what this looks like come Friday. See how much grass has grown up in there. Have this fun grassy area for the rabbit. Oh, I think this is gonna be really cute, but we will see. This is an experiment and very sloppily thrown together. I have all of these embellishment type things. I got these carrots and then some pretty ribbon, pardon the neighbor's dog. The pretty plaid ribbon and then this one here that has these polka dots on it. But the thing I realized though is I, I don't know how to work with ribbon. I have no idea what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos about like bow making or something, and then maybe create something to go across the top of this. I don't know. We'll see that at the end of the video, if I end up doing anything there. I know I'll probably end up throwing something else down inside here. Maybe some little carrots that I snip off of here or a tiny little Easter egg, something. I don't know. We'll find out. I went ahead, put that vase inside, and then dumped out the pond here, the basin. I didn't film it. All I did was tip something over and dump it out didn't seem that exciting there is one problem here see that this does have a crack in it and heck of an echo is that a crack too down here i didn't see that one before oh it doesn't go all the way through so i'm not that worried this one that doesn't go all the way through but this one does so i'm going to put some aquarium grade silicone on there let it dry give it a day or so and then can get this fountain set up Hopefully. I'm going to test it for weeks and keep doing what I got to do until it holds water. I was going to use Flex Seal, which says it's aquarium safe. Like people use it in their ponds and around their tanks. They build like plywood aquariums with them and used in ponds and terrariums, polydariums. It says it's non-toxic, dries, food grade safe once it's dry and all that stuff. But then if you look on their site and say, is it safe for drinking water? They say, no. <laughs> And this is mostly used for drinking water. It's circulating water, so it's not the same as like a container of water, which I think is what they're referring to. But just to be safe, I'm going to stick with the aquarium grade silicone that won't leach anything into the water and I don't have to worry about it. Easy to use. Got the silicone put in place. It's drying very quickly, but I'm going to give it the full 24 hours just to be safe. 
And now I need to dump these big blue pots, the one here and the one over there, and I'll head out to the nursery. See if they have some fun little spring plants to toss into these things. Something to hold us over until it's nicer out. It's a very gorgeous day. It's like 75 and sunny. Not great for filming videos, but an amazing day to be outdoors. And I imagine the nurse will be pretty packed. So I'll do my best to try and get as much filmed as I can while I'm there so y'all can get a good look at the plants. Hey, baby. Oh, he's having fun. Woohoo. That's a lot of stuff. That's a eight foot tarp, I think. Held all the stuff. All right, now go to the nursery. I wanted to get this done before I go because I was like, I want to be able to come home and not have to do the, the dirty things, you know? And if you're wondering, because I didn't film it, uh, to do big containers like this, I just very gently lay them on their side and then I like straddle them and start pulling this stuff out. And when it gets too complicated, I take a shovel and just go in there and stab the roots out until they're loose and then pull and not so bad. Took like three minutes. Not a big deal. I'll take this over to one of the garden beds and spread it out and try and cut those pieces up into smaller portions and then head to the nursery, go to Sugar Creek, see what we can find for these containers. I should have brought a bigger car. You see, you can't see. Plants everywhere. Oh, it's so cute. Tiny little peach suit the honeybee. You can't see it. Prunus bonfire. Look at it. The plants just keep going and going and going. So much to look at. Um, what are these? They are freaking adorable. Look at those flowers. They're all frilly and fluffy. Honeybees seem to appreciate them. Makes me so happy seeing humming, humming bees, honeybees out. Frizzle Sizzle Lemonberry, and that's a fun name too. I don't really need any more pansies, but this isn't about needs. This is about wants. We're having fun here. It's a treat yourself day. Okay, I probably don't need the whole tray though. Some pretty vinca. <sighs> Creeping Jenny, I love it. I don't think I'm going to bother with trailers because the spring plants, you know, those are only going to be in those containers for like six weeks. So I don't, it, it doesn't really make sense that I have Creeping Jenny absolutely everywhere at home. It's not really doing much right now, but it will be soon. Ooh, Dianthus, and they have stock. Love stock, it smells so good. I'm going to have to grab some Wobbularia while I'm here. Osteospermum. So that would be a nice option. They're a little small, but they should be popping open here pretty quick. I like this white one. It's pretty. Oh, that's a shrubbery. This is just like a tiny little peek at it. There's a ton behind me. There are a lot of customers here, and I don't want to uh, infringe on anyone's shopping experience. I'm trying to keep the shots kind of close and tight. Some nice white gillas here. Look at these. Skywalker boxwood. 15 feet, only 3 to 5 feet wide. Nice and narrow. Use that for topiaries and spirals. These are neat looking. I, I don't know what I do with them, but they're cool. Very lush and green. It's just green. The green things. All the green things make me happy. Ooh. That's a good price. When you consider these are at least four feet tall. That's pretty dang good. I do have a spot where I want some boxwoods to flank a path. No, no, I have to put thought into things that cost so much money. Stop it. These are beautiful. They're columnar blue spruce. They say 30 feet high by 10 feet wide. Uh, I bet those look beautiful when they get full grown. Oh, and they have gorgeous hydrangea standards. That's really nice that they have shrubs and hydrangeas this time of year because a lot of the nurseries don't get those in until like mid-June. I want to wait until they're in flowers they sell faster. I understand that but this is the time to start getting those things planted. Very much prefer to get them going earlier in the season so it's nice to be able to walk around and see these things. Oh and I don't know if I mentioned I'm in Sugar Creek Gardens. I'm at Sugar Creek Gardens here in St. Louis if you were wondering. They have an amazing selection of perennials and annuals. A good amount of house plants has popped up a new greenhouse. I'm gonna go check that out next. And then I'm probably gonna stop filming because there there are a lot of people here and I feel weird about it. Um yes please. The house plants in here are just beautiful. Look at this greenhouse. Everything is so lush and happy, and there's a fantastic selection.
look at how cute these are. That's too close, I'm sorry. Those were adorable. Okay, cars loaded up. Leaving Sugar Creek. Beautiful nursery. Come check them out. Fantastic selection and oh my goodness. Some of the most friendly, nicest employees ever. Absolutely love it in there. You know it's a good nursery when you're leaving and you're like, oh, I cannot wait to come back. Good morning, pumpkin. I think the sun's gonna come out. Hopefully, how you doing, pretty butt? How you doing? You so cute. Why did I call you pretty butt? That was weird. Been a few days. We've had a lot of clouds and a lot of mist. We finally go outside and have a look at the plants. Do some planters. Oh, that sun. There's that sun. Does that feel nice, pumpkin? Such a sweetheart. Someone's happy to be outside. Stay off that umbrella. You better stay off that umbrella. Don't you do it. Get up, Turbo. Get off there. Oh, the sky. It's so nice to see it again. I got home from the nursery and we had to get right on top of editing the Oxalis video. And uh, then it got cloudy and gloomy and rained and misted off and on for about four days. So it's very nice to see the sky again. I know it hasn't been long for y'all, but for me, it's been days. The rain was good though. The umbrella's on the ground back there just because the wind was pretty extreme and it kept blowing it off the table. It blew everything, blew all the plants over and I just left them because we're supposed to keep having, oh good, he has the seashell. Okay, he's got a quiet toy, good boy, quiet toy. I need to pick the plants up. That's what all I was getting at and the fountain. Well, that's been a problem. Oh, we're gonna have a plant haul here in just a second. Just one second. I'll show you all the fun stuff I got at Sugar Creek. What I didn't realize, just because of the angle, you won't really be able to see it either, but this crack actually goes up a little bit further than I could see. So it's holding water to where it's concealed, but I do need to dump this out again and seal it up some more, but it was raining all week. I thought about taking this into the gross space and sealing it up in there, like doing the rest of that. But I just, I hate the smell of silicone. I really prefer to do those things outdoors. So, oh, and this video has to come out tomorrow. So the fountain's on pause since the silicone takes at least 24 hours to really cure. I mean, really it doesn't, but you're supposed to wait 24 hours. So that's what I have to do. So I won't be able to have that done by the time the video comes out. That, and I didn't seal it on the other side. And I think I probably should. It's one of those things where we want to get it done and do it right. I'm going to go around, pick up the palm trees, get the umbrella back on the table, and you have a look at the plants. Got some fun stuff. Oh, and get those planters together. I've been wanting to do that for days. Been sitting in the house looking at these pretty plants on the table and wanting to get outside and plant them, but I just knew it wouldn't be a good idea with the rain. What are you doing? Okay, good boy. Have to say, I am impressed that those tulips are still holding on. Got pretty chilly, and I didn't expect those flowers to last long because they looked like they had progressed fairly far when I brought them home. Look at the cute little pansies, aren't they adorable? Cute little happy faces they have on them. You saw these at the nursery, the frizzle sizzle lemon berry pansies. I know I said while I was there that I didn't need an entire flat of these pansies, but I mean, just look at those faces. How could I not? I ended up getting the entire flat. I'm sure nobody's surprised by because they're adorable. That and those planters that I'm planting up, those are really big planters and pansies. They need to be grouped fairly tightly together in order to look nice and to get some instant appeal from them. I just absolutely love the ripples and the fluffle, fruffle, fluffy, fluffiness. <laughs> Having trouble talking. They're so pretty, I can't even put it into words. I didn't bring the entire flat over to show because we're going to be seeing those planted up here in just a moment. And there really was an assortment of the different flower types on them. Like you can see this one right here that has a much darker purple flower on it. I did mix and match and try to make a flat that had more of the lighter toned colors in them. But there are still several of those darker ones, which I think is nice. That'll add some contrast. I like that there are some that have the more yellow tone and then the lighter colors. I think they're very happy and cheerful and they have a lot of texture. So those are gonna look great in those planters. Okay, all right, look at, look at. Had to get some alyssum. This is Lavender Stream, Lobularia. We even see that, see the tag, Lobularia. They have a beautiful light purple tone to them, even some white on the inside with some of those flowers. This is supposed to be a more compact type. The tag says 10 inches. I know a lot of us have gotten used like the Snow Princess and some of the ones from Proven Winners are get absolutely massive. I don't think I'll even be seeing those at the nurseries anytime soon. It's still a ways off till we'll be safe to plant those, probably a few weeks. 
and uh, I thought that this had a nice tone to it. I like the color on it. It's not going to get huge. And yes, I did say I wasn't really focused on getting trailers for those containers. These aren't for those containers. I got six of them, and uh, I think that the plan was to do uh, three in a hanging basket, and then I'm not sure what I was thinking about with the other three. That can be the problem with there being several days between when I went to the nursery to get the plants and then doing the actual planters. So, oops, end up forgetting what the entire purpose was and why I wanted the ones that I got. I love having Wobulaire around. It's the smell. They smell so fantastic early in the morning. And on that note, got some stock here. This variety is called Harmony Violet. The flowers are purplish to a purple red color. You can see these are loaded up with buds, ready to keep on flowering. I just love stock. Stock smells amazing. And they had two different kinds and I couldn't make up my mind. So I was like, you know what? Let's get them both. So this one's Harmony Deep Rose, and it's, well, you can see, a very pretty rosy color. More of a fuchsia-y magenta type tone to those flowers. These are for hanging baskets. I couldn't make up my mind between the two because they both have some red tones in them and they both have some purple tones to them. So I said, forget it, let's get them both. I didn't even realize I have all this mess in the background that you can see, I'm so sorry. And then I did show these while at the nursery, these are the purple eye osteospermums. Better look at that tag. Pretty dark eyed flowers, perfect for containers or gardens, attracts butterflies. 12 to 24 inches tall. None of the ones I got are in bloom right now. Have to wait a minute to get to see any flowers on these, but that's okay. I mean, it's gonna be a pretty white daisy-like flower with a purple center. I think will look nice and fresh and the white, I was gonna show you. Look how great those white flowers pair up with these pansies. Isn't that amazing? No, they're not, you can't even tell. That was stupid. Regardless, it's going to look nice. These will be in the background with those right there. The stock, like I mentioned, those are going in hanging baskets. Y'all are about to see. Don't need to talk about all that. So there's one more thing. You know, I talked about the trailers. I have a bunch of short plants here, but what about in the middle? What should go in the middle? I'm so excited. I am so excited to show you. Well, just shut up. Let's have a look at these next plants. Okay, you see? You see them? Look at them. They just stick an adorable, covered in beautiful light pink, gorgeous flowers. These are bonfire peaches and they are very nice, thick plants. You see the trunks on these? Look at those trunks. Very thick, very nice, sturdy plants. If I had to guess, I would say that each one of these is about five feet tall is what that looks like. So the bonfire peaches, they only get, I think about six feet tall. I had one years ago and uh, I wanted a new one for a long time. I had to dig mine up and get rid of it back in 2009 because if you remember my old dog Tucker, he would pull the peaches off of it and then they would go right through him and then they would end up in the, he would, he would poop the peaches out in the pool. It was disgusting. You'd dig that thing up and throw it away too. That was the downside to having the peach be so short and where the dogs could reach it. And I've wanted to get some new ones for a couple of years to put over by my driveway on each side of the path and some planters, at least for a few years. You know, perennials, trees and shrubs, they only do well in pots for a few years. We'll talk more about that when it's time to move them. I was on the lookout for them the last couple of years and the ones I'd been seeing were just small or the, I didn't really like the caliper of the trunk because remember if these are going to be in pots during the winter time over there in the driveway, they need nice girthy, thick wood trunks on the plants that for better cold protection. It is so sunny. I can see absolutely nothing, I hope. Things are in focus. Careful what you wish for, right? It goes from cloudy to just like blindingly bright outside. So these are going to be the temporary centerpieces for these pots. They're not actually going to be planted in these containers. They're going to stay in their nursery can and I'm just going to fill soil in around them, pop the annuals and they're with them. Then in about six to eight weeks, something like that, these will end up over in the planters in the driveway. And then these will be annual planters over here. The bonfire peach. A cool looking plant. The fruit is, eh, it's okay. Comment down below if you like it. It's not one of my favorites. They're certainly edible, but I think that they are more popular to be used for like canning or baking, that sort of thing, which is fine. That's what I would prefer to do with them anyways. But the foliage on these, it's a dark burgundy color, long strappy leaves. That's just a neat looking plant. Something that stands out, doesn't look like most other things in the garden add some contrast. You see them with the flowers, you go, wow, that's beautiful. And then they have that dark foliage that just makes people go, whoa, what is that? And then they have a nice fall color to them too. 
So great year round interest. Okay, I don't want to talk about these too long when I can't even see my screen and know if y'all can see what's going on over here. So I'll just get these planted up. Been waiting for days. I'm so excited to get some plants down inside these pots. Oh, I love it. How stinking cute is this? So happy and cheery. Now, I haven't actually backfilled them with soil quite yet. I've noticed with pansies, if I mess with them too terribly much right from the get, then they throw a fit and look like garbage. I wanted to show what these look like before they go ahead and throw their little fit and need to have a bounce back. It's got the uh, frizzle sizzle lemon berries scattered in here with some of just regular like big yellow pansies and i also tossed in some of what are i think they're just called matrix morpheus pansies really common standard pansies i think these all are actually you can see that bright yellow better i noticed when i was mocking this up that i like the way the frilly pansies look better when there are some regular ones mixed in with them it just makes them stand out more and the frizzle sizzles have a smaller flower on them and i thought it would look nice to have some of the larger flowers in the mix as well got a romaine lettuce on each side those are going to get tall and fairly narrow in there big broad leafy greens and then the osteospermums those will bush out nicely and have those white flowers covering them and then the daffodils so I had a pot of these that I just grabbed from the hardware store and I thought, you know, why not put those in there? I really, really wanted to see what it would look like and I'm glad that I did because it's adorable. However, I mean, you know, blooming bulbs aren't really things that we should be taking apart and transplanting. So we'll have to wait and see how these do. A little bit of an experiment there. I did my best to not mess with their roots any more than I had to. I was very, very, very gentle with them. I love it. I'm very pleased. I like the way the daffodils look. I think that's going to look awesome when that romaine starts to come up. Those big, broad green leaves. Somewhat mounted shape that'll be on each side with those osteospermums covered with the white flowers with all the little, so many pretty little happy pansies planted underneath them. And then of course the beautiful pink flowers from the peach right above everything. And once this is done flowering and it starts to bud out, I think that that's still going to look absolutely fantastic. Just from having a tree planted above them, it's almost like a little miniature meadow. I did think about scattering some of the grass seed in here because I've been telling y'all I've just been obsessed with planting wheatgrass and everything. But I know I would regret that because there'll be spots where it comes up really tall and I'll be plucking it out. The only thing that I, I, I'm torn about is that I do think some creeping Jenny coming over the front of these. That, just that green against the blue on these pots that would have looked really pretty. But I would need to buy eight of them for something that I'm going to be pulling apart in six to eight weeks. And I just I couldn't bring myself to do it. I don't think that they would have even done much in the six to eight weeks. It's not going to be terribly warm. Most of what's in these containers, with the exception of the lettuce and hopefully the osteospermums, they're going to stay looking pretty much the same. Pansies don't tend to do a whole lot of growing. They kind of just start flowering and keep doing that. And the daffodils, I mean, they're already doing their thing. Once those are done flowering though, I still think that's gonna look neat having those in there because it kind of looks like tall blades of grass. So it's where I was with the wheatgrass. It's like, okay, kind of, get my cake and eating it too there. I think that'll still be nice. It'll still have some nice texture. Then once I'm ready to pot these up with tropicals, all of the pansies will get lifted and I usually put them into really large, shallow containers and I move them into the shade. I'll be trying to lift everything out that I can and maintain as much root as I can and move them to more appropriate locations. So osteospermums, 
they'll be fine in the sun and in the summer heat. But the lettuce, you know, it will bolt once it gets hot. And the pansies, they tend to not do great during our summers, particularly when they're surrounded by piping hot pavement. These planters get a lot of sun. It gets very toasty in the summer. The pansies would just melt. I don't think they'd appreciate being out here all summer long. Not in this spot anyways. I'll move them over into the shade. That's what I always do with my pansies. Get them into the shade and then if they are still looking good in the fall then I move them around for winter containers or fall containers and keep using them. There's my soil that I need to use to pack the soil in there. Oh and the thing I didn't mention. Oh and the plastic cups. You might want to know what that's about. I don't want the soil being actually like right around and in contact with the trunks on these peaches. Since it's not going to be for very long, it probably would have been totally fine to just leave it be, but I thought, you know what, just play it safe. Make sure there's air around those trunks because the way that these needed to be nestled down in there so that I wouldn't have to dig very deep into the root ball of the peaches was to have the whole container sunk down lower in there. I don't know if I'm describing this very well. The peaches, they're flowering, right? So we don't want to mess with their roots meaning that I didn't want to have to dig out very much soil from the surface of their root balls in order to plant things on top of them. So I knew I'd have to have a deeper layer of soil in there and I didn't want that So Is, it, is, it, is that better? Do we understand now? Where the soil was going to have to be would have been up there against that trunk. And figured just to play it safe, go ahead and put a barrier there so that it can't actually be in contact with the bark. Whew, I don't know why I made that so hard to explain. That's it. Everything's done. Okay, well, it's not really done. Right, I need to backfill them. But you get the idea. They're looking pretty good. They're making me very happy. I saw them through the window when I was inside, changing my camera batteries. I'm like, oh my goodness. These are just dank and adorable. Hello spring, right? Yep, and I forgot something. So, interrupting everything that's going on with a clip from my phone after I've filled these in and giving them a nice water. I uh, forgot to mention I didn't put the lobularia in here because I remembered Turbo just pulled the cord on that pump. So we have to go get that out of the pool. I remembered that I got those for different containers. That's that's why I had six of them. So they weren't for these to begin with. That's why they're not in the mix. Then here's a look at oh, it's like how they do tend to look somewhat haggard when you first get them planted up. Helps a lot to plant a big group of them. They hold each other up, but right now, yeah. A little bit sad looking. It's actually not too bad. Those should stand back up very, very quickly. All right, back to whatever was going on in the video. Oh, so pretty. I know, I need to get the tags off those peaches. They're fine for right now. It's supposed to get pretty chilly tomorrow night. If it looks like there's gonna be a freeze or a frost, I'm going to put a stake in the middle of these and throw a frost cloth over them. Help keep those flowers nice and healthy so that they can get a decent set of peaches on them. And I should have also mentioned, even if these bonfire peaches don't produce, which they should, but April's very unpredictable here, so we'll have to watch the weather. And then they've been in the car and they were shaking around and now they're in here and then they're gonna be going over there. It's a lot of movement. That was another reason I really didn't want to disturb these roots any more than necessary. I was very careful when digging around in there because you don't want to mess with the flowers on them. But if there's a lot of bud loss, if we have a bad freeze, something like that, it's not the end of the world to me because I think that these trees are absolutely just beautiful whether they have fruit or not. They're just a really nice looking ornamental tree. Does it count as an ornamental if you can eat the fruit on it? Well, that's what I'm going with. You get what I'm saying. All in all, between the two planters, there were three six packs of the frizzle sizzle lemon berries and then an eight pack of the yellows and an eight pack of the matrix morpheus mix was at 16 and eight so 34 pansies in each one four of the uh, daffodils two romaine lettuce and then the two osteosporums so there's the breakdown and then of course the peaches in each one and just imagine how great these are going to look when things dry off and i can go through it and get everything cleaned up all the leaves and twigs and things that have been falling down to get that final sweep the final winter cleanup done things are already you see the hill back there look how green it is it was like yellow just a few days ago Whoa. Ooh, compost under my nails, that's gonna stain. Spring has just sprung, <laughs> only four days into spring, so just imagine when things are all cleaned up and looking great out here. I'm so excited about these. It really just felt great to get my hands into the soil and be playing with the plants. Okay, now, the last thing. The beginning of the video, planted up the terrarium with the bunny rabbit in it. Let's look at how that grass grew. It's only been a few days, right? Like four and a half, five days, and I mentioned not a lot of sun. Look at those roots. Isn't that fun? Very fun seeds to grow. The wheatgrass, they just grow and grow and grow. And they have these little dewdrops 
on them. This will look totally different in next week's vlog. That grass is going to be much, much, much taller. I'll go through and pluck out the pieces of the grass that are going in the middle of the pathway there, but I think I'm going to leave the ones that are on the edges. I think that looks kind of neat. I sort of like how that looks. Wheat grass is fun to play with in things like this because it grows so quickly. It's kind of like instant gratification. You plant it up and within about, I'd say 48 to 72 hours, you have growth. And yesterday, this grass was just barely popping up out of that soil. So that's how much has changed in just 24 hours. We'll have to keep it pruned. That's not a big deal. Just go and cut it with some scissors and then reach in through the top and pull out the clippings. Heck, I could probably even stick a vacuum hose down in there and lightly vacuum out the clippings that are in there. Lots of reflections, hard to see the whole thing, but really I'm not done with this yet, so there will be better looks at it next week. I know I'd say I'd give you a better look this week, but it just didn't do quite as much as I thought it would compared to some of the other ones that I've been playing around with. But again, there just wasn't much sun, so I'm happy with how it's looking right now as it is. Oh, and I looked up a YouTube video or three on how to make bows and this is what happened. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's good to know our strengths and weaknesses. I don't think bow making is one of mine. Although this was my first attempt ever at making a bow, so it's not that bad. The idea though was that I wanted to have that up here and spread out like that, but really I kind of like just having the carrots up there. No, that matters. We'll play around with this some more next week because I want to see that grass grow some more before I do anything else with it. Wow, that was a very brief break from the rain. There goes my phone. I need to get these containers backfilled, get the soil in there and give them a little watering. It's supposed to be more, uh, excuse you, turbo, no. I wondered how long it was going to take him to pull this thing off the side of the pole. This isn't for you. That's not for you. You better leave it alone. Yeah, go ahead, get the coconut. Play with the coconut. Not the animal ramp, play with the coconut. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. Hope y'all enjoyed and having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Oh, and the Sugar Creek Gardens. Even if you don't live in St. Louis, I would highly recommend following them on Instagram because they have some great posts with their plants. They're very informative. I've actually, I've learned a lot just from seeing the different things that they post about different varieties and what some of the strengths are with the different plants that you can pick up from the nursery. Also, if you're in St. Louis, you can order plants online. They have like a section of things you can order and go there and pick them up when they come in. I thought that was pretty cool. Had a great time there. Cannot wait to go back. Oh, these trees, they're such nice looking peach trees. It's those trunks, nice girthy trunks. It's felt a raindrop. Time <laughs> to say goodbye. Comment down below, say hi. Have you started your spring containers yet? It's a little early in most places. It's even a little bit early here, but I just, I couldn't help myself. All these plants I put in here with the exception of the osteospermums should be good with some brief freezes. Hopefully. And the daffodils I have over here in the garden, that yellow patch that you can't even see, they've been fine. They've had some snow and ice on them. Haven't skipped a beat. But those aren't raising. You get it. It's fine. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.